Hey guys, Lee from Overbite Gaming here, and we are finally here. We are finally doing the second part of the Vampire video, and we are going to talk about the most splendid of splendids. We are going to talk about Vampire Bloodlines. Now, Vampire Bloodlines is one of my personal favorite games. It is such a good RPG. The only problem with it is, well, the combat's a bit wonky, if I'm completely honest with you, and there's a fair few technical flaws if you're playing the vanilla game. So, back in the day when the Source engine was being released in Half-Life 2, a number of developers licensed it ahead of time and made games with it. Troika, the guys that developed Vampire Bloodlines, being one of them. Unfortunately, uh, obviously Half-Life 2 required a bit of polishing, so Vampire sat on the shelf because by contract they were not allowed to release ahead of Half-Life 2, thus stealing the Source engine thunder. Uh, unfortunately, because it was on the shelf, you would have thought they would have ironed out like all the bugs and stuff. No, no, they didn't. Uh, what happened is you got to a certain stage in the game and it just would not load the next map. That's pretty criminal in the fact that your game won't actually load the next area to progress in the game. You would think the playtesters or anyone having played it through would have picked that up, but no. Uh, there was a workaround, which I managed to find, which was uh, you, you basically enabled the developer console and you could just make it load the next map manually. You put in the command to do it. Uh, it was eventually patched, but not by Troika, unfortunately. Uh, Troika was shut down almost immediately after the release of Vampire. Um, I'm sure it's just a coincidence that their publishers were Activision. You know, <laughs> when did they do anything wrong, right? Hoi! Um, so we never actually got an official patch. I don't think they did one anyway. Uh, I do know that there was a number of patches released by the community. Um, it was back on the GameSpy boards at the time, but I'm sure they're around. In fact, I know they're around because I've got it installed. So that's amazing. So the story of Bloodlines is you're a freshly sired vampire. So you, you've been given the old kiss on the neck and you've just woke up to your new existence in a seedy hotel room where there's used condom wrappers. So obviously uh, a good night was had before his rebirth. And the door busts open. Camilla vamp Camarilla vampires come in and uh, basically stake your sire and you both get dragged up in front of the, the cam Camarilla. I can't say that word today. And the prince is like, oh, you didn't get permission to sire, and that's bad. And basically they execute your sire. Who, who's the guy that made you? That's what sire means. And they're just about to uh, execute you as well when Nines Rodriguez, an anarch, uh, he's a bruja uh, clan, stands up and goes, this is bullshit. And the prince is like, oh, well, actually, if you let me finish, um, I've decided he will live. And basically become the prince's lackey and go around doing things for him. Uh, it's a real fun ride. There's so many great characters in it. You actually make yourself a ghoul. A ghoul is where um, uh, you give a mortal vampire blood and they basically become your indentured servant and slightly sort of more hardy than people, but nothing like a vampire. But they're addicted to your blood and must have it all the time. And you can make her dress up in slightly sexier gear so that's good i like having myself a little slave who doesn't right well you know apart from regular slaves because that that's bad but we're talking about a computer game where um yes yeah, she's quite happy in her thraldom so leave her be uh there's also standout performances um you've got smiling jack who's voiced by the same guy that does bender whose name escapes me right now because i'm an idiot uh, and then you have um, the Malkavian sisters, the Vormans, uh, Therese and I'm looking, I'm looking, because damn, why, why can I not remember this? She's like, Jeanette, there you go, I've remembered before I actually looked, even though I was in the midst of looking. Yes, so you've got Therese and Jeanette, and there's a huge, huge twist in that tale, but it's so good, and the voice actress is actresses uh, do such a good job in like varying the characters up so it's really good uh you do move around yourself in south santa monica you've got to see uh the prince's ghoul um and he gives you a mission to like get some explosives and stuff you go on and basically it centers around they found this coffin and there's all the, these people predicting that that will be the end that will be gehenna which is the vampire apocalypse if it should be opened and of course come the end of the game uh you take sides with factions and it either gets stored away or opened or whatever uh but it's so good i mean just going around being a vampire is fantastic you get special dialogue options 
uh, depending on your skills. So if you're like uh, Toreador, maybe you could like do the seductive thing, so you can get past people that way. Or um, if you're a bit of a gang rail, with you know you can intimidate them, or you can just persuade them if you're a bit a bit slick. You can just persuade your way past things, which is always nice. There is a lot of combat in the game, particularly to the second half, which is a problem. Uh, the combat engine is not great. Uh, guns don't really work very well on vampires at all. They work okay on the humies, so you can blow them away, and that's not a problem. But it's not very accurate, and it's not a great experience shooting guns anyway. Uh, melee combat works a lot better on vampires, with sort of bladed weapons and, in some places, your own claws. But uh, you have, like, a three-hit combo, and you just do that over and over, so it's kind, it's kind of simplistic. Uh, the combat is really the falling down point, and as the game progresses, it gets more and more combat heavy and gives you less options to go around it, which is a bit disappointing. Um, but of course, we have high hopes for the new one that's coming out. We do know now that you will, it will be a continuation of the first game, and that you are basically a fledgling Thin Blood. Now, that's interesting, because the Thin Bloods were in Bloodlines. Basically, what they are is. They're sort of a really low level power power level vampire. So you get made in with thin blood and you're kind of like regarded as an outcast because you're not you're not really showing any sort of proclivities towards a certain clan and your powers are weaker. So it's gonna be interesting that you start you off like that. I mean, it does raise the questions, are you gonna be able to diabolize yourself? I think that's the term. It's basically uh, when you kill another vampire by feeding off him. And that gives hit the, that vampire's power to you, but it's really frowned upon in kindred society. They're like, shit, no. And it basically likes makes your your aura look like pitch black and horrible. So like people just can tell by looking if they got like specs or something. They're just like, yeah, that dude's vet die or die apple or uh, big words. I can't do them today, but you know what I mean. Anyway, guys. This game is superb. It's going for like a steal on Steam. It's probably about six, seven quid. If you haven't played it, I strongly suggest you do. Uh, make sure you patch up. I think it's like 1.3 is the highest you can go with it. Uh, that fix the um, the error where you can't progress and clean up a few bits and pieces as well because it did release in a fairly buggy state. It did do well. It did get an 80 out of 100 on Metacritic though. So that should tell you that even with these broken bits how good the game is in and of itself just the writing and the role play and all of that side of it is just excellent it's often described as a flawed masterpiece i think that's very fair to be completely honest with you and if you do take the unusual choice of being a malcavian you get uh, dialogue options that are different from everybody else's because um you're mental and you have voices in your head and you will find yourself talking to street signs and it's amazing and weird and mental <laughs> And it's just a fantastic game. There's a level in it where you have to go to a haunted ho hotel and, like, solve the haunting. And, my, it's so atmospheric. I mean, this is, like, before, you know, Outlast and, like, proper sort of horror things were kicking your ass. I mean, you see, I read Silent Hill, but it was just so atmospheric. I mean, I always used to just turn the volume down and just... I knew exactly where I needed to go because I play that level so much. Sound off, head down run to all the bits and pieces not looking around there's like ashtrays fly at me and stuff and it's super creepy and really well done and you can really tell that after the first half of the game it, they really moved away from that sort of thing and it's 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 like oh here's legions of bad guys for you to beat up and it's, it's the combat's not great so it doesn't work but you do have uh, other vampires to hurt you got some really nasty bastards as well they're all sort of like flesh manglery golem assembly ones Ugh. it's very sticky and very gooey but it's in a sewer because it's always in a bloody sewer and you have werewolves werewolves turn up and they are basically vampire kryptonite they are fucking badass in this i'm not sure if it's the same in the tabletop game i've never played the werewolf version of it but jesus yeah they're completely badass and you've got um chinese vampires as well and basically they consider themselves superior to regular kind because they don't need to drink blood. So if they don't need to drink blood, I'm, I'm kind of like thinking, how, how's that a vampire? But I uh, don't know, whatever. It's so good, and the PS de Resistance is there's a fortune teller sort of character that you meet early on, 
And if you ask her for like, I think it's like general tips or anything, you can tell me. And it's like, and she's like, it, it doesn't matter if you win the game, it's if you bought it. Because obviously at that time, piracy was completely rife. And uh, a lot of people did pirate stuff. I can't remember. No, I did not. Did I? I, I? I was guilty of doing this a few times as well. Generally speaking, though, I've rebought them anyway. So I have put money down on all the games I own. Unless they were shit. And then I was like, yeah, that was a demo. That's all I used that for. Yeah. Anyway, guys. It's been me wobbling on for far too long about Vampire. I don't even know how long that is. Shall we check? Shall we check how long that is? That is... Ah, like my, my recording software just invents time units. That's 323.04, none of these are seconds. So, uh, I don't know. It could be a long one, it could be a short one. Anyway, guys, I'm going to shut up for right now. Uh, I think we've got a podcast coming on Saturday that I'm also about to record, so I'll get the beers in for that one. And uh, I'll catch you later, guys. I'm off to play Mortal Kombat for a while. Hmm. Whether or not you win the game matters not. It's if you bought it. <laughs>